architects and Swiss Army knives. Do you know what those two things have in common? Let me tell you in a minute. But before that, we will talk about software. There's so much software out there. There's so much out there. And people always ask me, how did you do that? How, how can I make something like that? Which tools did you use? Today, I want to dedicate this episode to the tools that I use for my conceptual designs and the tools that you might want to use as well from my point of perspective. Let's get started. First of all, there isn't that one tool out there that covers all your needs, in architecture at least. You will need a variety of tools that you need to learn to get you covered. And this is where this knife comes back in. A knife like that has different tools for different situations. And you as an architect, you just want to be like one of those knives. You will encounter different situations throughout your career. And the more tools you have in your toolbox, the better equipped you will be to face those moments. Also knowing a variety of tools will definitely shape your portfolio, your capability of understanding other team members with different skills and your problem solving skills as you're able to look at the problem from a different skill perspective. All right, we're gonna do this in three parts. Maya, Rhino and 3ds Max. So the first tool in my workflow is Autodesk Maya. It is usually used to create character animations and digital worlds for movies, but it also has its advantages for architects. It has an overwhelming amount of functions, but to be honest, I don't even use 5% of all of them. When I was studying in Studi Zadid, it was our first tool of choice because of all the crazy stuff we did there. And today I use it mostly for three things, brainstorming, sketching, and projects that simply need more creative freedom. So every time I'm trying to come up with something new, fresh or unexpected, I would resort to Maya. I usually start by dropping in a surface into the scene and start shaping it based on the concept I have in mind. Then I can either extrude the surface and keep modifying it or add new ones to build out my vision. Often my geometry is flying all over the place, which is not a problem though, because I'm only trying to get a starting point for my project, but it really helps to come up with some quick 3D sketches that give a good foundation to talk about. Maya's full power comes into play once you are working on project highlights, which are going to be either 3D printed or CNC milled. For example, this was a project for a special shoe drawer front. Yes, you heard me right, a shoe drawer front. I did all kinds of weird projects already. Where the client wanted a 3D form surface, that would be an eye catcher for his guests coming in. This project has been modeled full in Maya and later exported to another software to create a file which could be read by a milling machine. Which brings us to our second tool, Rhino 3D. So Rhino is cool because it's so versatile. And by itself, it's a fantastic tool which has a lot of capabilities, but Grasshopper, which is a plugin that comes by now already pre-installed with Rhino, is something you don't want to miss, especially as an architect. In most design software, you will need to copy and paste elements such as lines and cubes if you wish to use them again. Grasshopper's use of variables makes these things much, much easier. You only need to build your definition once and you can enter any number into your variable to create the desired number of elements, which is a huge time saver. If we go back to this example, after I had a more or less clear idea of my project, I imported my geometry into Rhino to rebuild it with NURBS. Once that was done, I had a clean geometry and a great foundation to detail the project out and apply some Grasshopper scripts on it. In this example, I generated the facade panels with Grasshopper. It allowed me to quickly switch between different panel inclinations, thicknesses, or even alignment of the elements. There are a bunch of other extensions available that allow a lot of other stuff like applying physical forces to your geometry or calculating structural components. It doesn't matter how simple or complex my projects are, Rhino Grasshopper always helps me to optimize and improve my workflow for my projects. After that point, I could take the geometry in Rhino and also render it there for example with V-Ray, but usually I choose to export it into 3ds Max for two simple reasons. The first one is that our large chunk of visualization industry is built on 3ds Max. That means that there are tons of 3D models and other resources available to download for free or for purchase. This doesn't just make my workflow much faster, but also adds a lot of production quality with those realistic props. The second reason is that I can use the Corona Render plugin with 3ds Max, which is in my opinion the best render plugin out there because of its simplicity. It's super easy, fast and intuitive to use. Ok, 
Hey, that's it guys. Those are my three tools that I use on a constant basis. I know the tools that I mentioned today are all paid. However, however, there are also tools out there which are completely for free. For example, Blender. I will make a video about that in the future. I'm not saying you should use the same software that I'm using. It's just giving an idea of what I'm using to create my projects. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. And I would say we see us next time.